Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Long Haul. I'm here with Dr. Carrie Thomas this morning. Uh, she's an associate professor of radiology at UNC uh, School of Medicine, as well as the associate program director for diagnostic radiology. A little bit about her training. Uh, she went to med school at University of South Florida, Marsani College of Medicine in Tampa. She went on to do her residency there as well. And then finally, a body imaging fellowship um, there as well at USF Marsani. So first off, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about um, radiology and um, you know taking the time. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, so me. yeah, for sure. Um, so by the, did you go to undergrad in Florida? I did. I'm a graduate of Florida State University in Tallahassee. Okay, nice. So you've been in Florida pretty much for most yep. of your training. Mm -hmm. Yep. I grew up in Tampa, Florida, and so did my training or undergrad in Tallahassee and then went back to Tampa for my medical school residency fellowship and my first faculty position. I'm now at UNC, but I was previously also at USF um, oh, wow. at Cancer Center on faculty. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. I actually went to USF my freshman year. So yeah, I really like Tampa. I like the Riverwalk, especially like at night mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah. always fun. Um, so going into the specialty, uh, first question is what is um, radiology as a specialty and what does it entail? Uh, well, radiology is a great, really diverse specialty. Um, it's excellent because you get to interact with all, not all, but almost all of the various other medical specialties. So you really get to be kind of a broad part of the clinical team. And so a really exciting uh, specialty uh, that continues to grow and evolve too, very technologically advanced. So there's a lot of great attributes to our specialty. Gotcha. And how many years of training to become a radiologist? So to become a radiologist, you have your standard four years of medical school. Then you do an intern year, um, and that can be a wide breadth. It can be surgical, medical, uh, pediatrics even, or transitional year. And then radiology residency is a four-year residency. Um, and then nearly everybody goes into fellowship, which is typically one year. I see. Um, and if you could talk a little bit about interventional radiology versus mm -hmm. Um, in general radiology and is that a fellowship or is that um, what is that exactly? Sure. So interventional radiology is a one of the subspecialties of radiology. There's actually the answer is both. So uh, now you can match directly into integrated vascular and interventional radiology. That's a six year program where you do uh, partially diagnostic and then partially spend your time doing interventional. However, people who maybe decide along the way, they're not sure if they want to do interventional right away, so might not match into interventional during the, the traditional NRMP match. Uh, there is a pathway called ESIR, which is early specialization into interventional radiology. So that's a pathway during the diagnostic radiology um, program that you can choose to, to kind of sort of jump the path. Again, you'll finish in six years. Um, and then a third option is if you do all of your diagnostic radiology residency, then you can do an independent two-year fellowship in interventional radiology. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met a neurointerventionalist. So is that um, an intervention so that specializes in neurology specifically? or is So it... a neurointerventionalist is an interventional radiologist that specializes in neurointervention. So typically brain, uh, head and neck intervention. So that is often additional training on top of interventional radiology training. Oh, wow. Okay. So they would kind of strictly do that or at least focus on. Yeah. So like they're who would uh, treat stroke uh, aneurysms. So neurointerventions. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, what drew you to medicine and then your specialty? Uh, drawn to medicine mainly because I guess I was always drawn to science. Science was a big um, draw for me in school. I also come from a family that has medical background, so uh, was kind of knew a little bit about the field of medicine before I started. Uh, what drew me into my specialty, honestly, is I was one of those people that really just liked everything. And so mm -hmm. I picked one that allowed me to have a wide breadth of experience so that I, I was able to sort of stay knowledgeable about various um, components of medicine. And so I think radiology is a great option for that, for people that want to continue to have a wide breadth. Right. And what is the most rewarding part of your job? Probably the most rewarding. I'm a diagnostic radiologist. So I think the most rewarding part is being able to help the clinical team figure out what's going on with their patients, right? Um, in the United States, and there's a shortage of radiologists around. Um, so volume, I would think, is probably one one of the biggest challenges that we all face. I see. Um, and as far as patient contact, do you see patients often? I guess as an interventional, you'd see patients more. 
Right. So I am not an interventional radiologist. I'm a diagnostic radiologist, but I do still see patients. We diagnostic radiologists do biopsy procedures, especially if you do breast imaging, you do biopsies all the time. I also, as a diagnostic radiologist, do uh, what's called fluoroscopy. So we see patients for those procedures every day. Um, our neuroradiologists do uh, lumbar punctures. So we do have, it's not the same patient contact that one would have if they were a direct clinical um, specialty, but we certainly do. That is a myth, I would say, about our specialty that we never see patients. That's not the case. We see them frequently. The other thing is we also interact with physicians all day long um, and clinicians and nurses to help coordinate care based off of imaging studies that are done. But we do get some interaction. Now our interventionalists do spend all day, every day with patients. Right. Yeah, I was actually, one of our questions was <laughs> a common myth about your specialty. So yep. common myth, I would say, is that that we like to be in rooms and not talk to people all day long. Yeah. <laughs> um, we actually tend to be a fairly friendly, um, welcoming group of people and we enjoy um, discussing with people. So we don't necessarily have that face to face with our patients every day, but we do talk to clinicians throughout the day, all day. And we do have patient interactions depending on what we're doing on any given day. Right, I see that. That's really good to know. Um, a little bit about lifestyle, like a typical day at work. I know you're a, kind of an academic setting, mm -hmm. um, but if you could go over that briefly, like sure. hours, what time you wake up? Yeah. Uh, oh, from like the time I wake, well, I wake up pretty early. I tend to be an early bird, but um, our yeah. schedules are actually. Uh, what's interesting is I wouldn't give a specific. Um, Kind of timeline of a radiologist because it's huge and widely variable especially given that we have the benefit of being able to do telemedicine so we can do teleradiology there are plenty of people that work seven days on and seven days off some people work swing ship type hours some people work overnight i typically work daytime hours and so it is actually um there's a wonderful um, accolade to our specialty that people are getting scanned all day, all night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so radiologists are need to read those imaging studies. So um, it, there are options to do that. Um, some people are always on site. Some people are fully remote. I tend to work a hybrid. Um, and and after COVID, it, uh, I would say that a lot of radiology has gone at least part partly um, telemedicine. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is, do the types of cases you see vary depending on academic versus hospital or, you know, private? Um, I would say, well, an academic is typically going to be in the hospital. I would say that our academic medical centers tend to be the tertiary care center. So by kind of by default are going to be your more complicated cases. And that's why we train people there, kind of train you to see what the most complicated are. That's not to say if you're in private practice or government practice or another community practice that you're not going to see complex stuff, but more of the complex cases tend to go to the academic medical centers, but we also still see the regular, you know, day-to-day -day what you would see in a typical community practice. Many of our academic centers also have outpatient imaging centers, so you have the same kind of breadth of a typical community practice as well. So um, I guess that's the thing about radiology is you're not sure it's going to come through your door because it's what was referred um, by the ordering doctor. So it's it's right. quite variable and that's what makes it exciting because you never know what you're going to see on day to day. Right. Um, how competitive is it to match into radiology? In general, it is a competitive specialty. It does have its ups and downs like any other specialty does, but in general, radiology is a, a fairly competitive specialty. Um, and it was it was pretty competitive this year as well, uh, but it is uh, it tends to be. It, it has had ups and downs, but in general, it's fairly competitive. I see. And the typical compensation for a radiologist? That also is very widely variable, depending on if you're in private practice, academic practice, government practice, um, and then some people, many people, it also varies based off of like we talked about if you have variable hours. So if you tend to work like overnight shifts, you're going to have differential salaries um, or time off based on that. So for example, our Nighthawk radiologists might work seven days on and then 14 days off. Um, so different. Uh, so I wouldn't give a, an exact number because it, it, it is so very widely variable depending on what your practice schedule looks like and the type of practice that you're in. Gotcha. And final question for you, Doc, is what advice do you have for people studying to be physician or go into medicine? 
My advice is that you've picked a noble profession uh, that we're so excited that more people are choosing to find our profession because there is a shortage of physicians and people to care for others. Um, and the advice is that it is hard and, and it might seem like it's, it's an impossible task at some times, but to keep seeing it through and persevering, um, that the end result is definitely fulfilling and worth it. Uh, and we do need people to care for our nation. Thanks. The world. Thank you. That's really good advice. I appreciate that. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Thomas, for coming on. And oh, she definitely actually go on her way to a conference if so she's talking to us from the airport. So yeah. she made the time for us. So definitely much, much appreciated. Of course. All right. Well, thank you so much.